join me in welcoming Governor Jack Marquette. Thank you. Thank you. Rebecca, thank you for the introduction and your great leadership at the uh, World Trade Center. It's really wonderful to be with all of you in what I believe is a, is a great event uh, for Delaware. Uh, certainly uh, good to be here with Secretary Locke, uh, who is a tremendous uh, Secretary of Commerce, uh, widely recognized uh, as so across the country, some uh, terrific press. Secretaries of Commerce don't always get a lot of press, but there have been some terrific pieces written about him. He and I, I had the uh, honor of having dinner with him and his wife, Mona, a couple months ago uh, at the National Governors Association. We had a great conversation, and uh, he is going to be the next ambassador to China, uh, which is a tremendous responsibility. Uh, we are just really grateful that you're here with us today. Uh, also, uh, of course, always great to be with uh, Senator Coons, who is doing a tremendous job uh, in Delaware, in, in Washington, fighting for all of us in Delaware. And uh, we do have, without a doubt, without a doubt, the best congressional delegation uh, in the country. Uh, when it comes to folks who remember why they're there, which is to fight for Delaware, which is to fight for jobs in Delaware, uh, all three of them, Senator Coons, Senator uh, Carver, Congressman Carney, they get it, and we are just really grateful to, to all of them. Uh, also good to be with the SBA's uh, Marie Johns with the Small Business Administration. Thank you so much for being here. We've got a great SBA uh, team uh, here in Delaware, and it's wonderful to have you uh, from the from the head office. Uh, Diane Farrell from the Export Import. Where Diane going? Right here. Uh, in, in the back. Thanks. Uh, great organization can be very valuable to uh, to businesses throughout Delaware. Make sure you know about the uh, Export Import Bank. Uh, again, to to Rebecca, to Michael Skuse, uh proud Delawarean, and the uh, uh, Deputy Secretary of Agriculture in, Wa in Washington. And uh, I'm not that I'm saving the best for last, but I'm saving a very important one for last, which is Lonnie George, uh, the president of Delaware Tech. Uh, this community college, uh, one of the very few statewide community college systems in the country, is phenomenal. Uh, they train, six, they have 16,000 Delawareans a year that they train. And they do an amazing job of working with the business community to help make sure that the business community is identifying the specific skills that are needed in the marketplace, uh, linking that to what's going on in the classroom and in the labs uh, here at Delaware Tech. Uh, Lonnie is a visionary. He's one, he's one of the rare people, actually, who combines an ability to execute uh, with the vision. Steve Case, uh, the guy who founded AOL, once said, uh, the vision without the ability to execute is just an hallucination. Uh, and I think there's a lot of truth to that. And Lonnie, we are just really uh, proud of the work that you do at, at, at Delaware Tech. How many of you are not from Delaware? All right, I got to give a commercial there for a second. <laughs> so to the Delawareans who have heard me say this before, I apologize, but I'm hoping that the, that the message never gets old. Uh, to those of you who are not from Delaware, uh, we understand business better than any other state. And I, I challenge you uh, to prove me wrong. And, no, I'm serious. I challenge you to prove me wrong. We, our job is to understand the industries that operate in the state and to, under, and to be more committed to the success of the businesses who are here uh, than any other state. And I, just, I do not believe that any other state uh, will be any better than us. We are a small state. We're a state of 900,000 people. And that means what we do is we think like you do. We think like the people who create the jobs and the prosperity in the first place. And that means we focus on great schools, which is why we were proud to come in number one in the country in the race to the top competition. It's why we focus on our uh, tax load, and that's why just last week, unlike many states in this uh, environment, I proposed a number of tax reductions, including the, uh, uh, the energy tax, a bit, uh, the gross uh, receipts tax, actually a, a reduction in personal income tax, uh, and one around the financial services uh, as well. So we focus on that. We focus on the quality of the workforce. We focus on the linkage between institutions of higher education and local companies, like I mentioned, with, uh, Delaware Tech, as well as our other institutions uh, do so well. But we also know that we have to be more responsive than any other state is. And when General Motors went into bankruptcy a couple years ago, they closed plants all over the country. Uh, the one plant that's reopening is one in Delaware. And that's going to be reopened by a company called Fisker Automotive. They're making a plug-in hybrid car. It's get, the first car being made in Finland is getting great reviews. The next car is going to be made in Delaware. 
And Henry Fisker himself said, when, decide, when explaining why he chose uh, Delaware to reopen a plant, he said the people in Delaware were able to get the key folks together faster than it takes him to get his family at four out to dinner. Um, the refineries have closed all over the country. In November of 2009, the Delaware City Refinery closed. Uh, yesterday, 2,113 people went to work there, uh, preparing for a restart within the next few weeks. And if you talk to Tom O'Malley, who is the, uh, the CEO of the company that bought that refinery, he actually started his business a couple years ago looking for distressed refiners. He's been in this, this business for a long time. He started a new partnership with Blackstone and First Reserve. And uh, refineries have closed all over the country. They chose, to, they chose to reopen the one in Delaware because he said Delaware gets it better than any place else. Sally May uh, has uh, decided to move their headquarters to Delaware. Purdue decided recently to move their agribusiness headquarters to Delaware. The list goes on. And so there, and there's a lesson here. And there's a lesson uh, for all of you who are not from Delaware, you ought to take a really serious look. And we're not, we, we believe that we do best when we work together as a region. So it's not, we're not interested in just sort of going out and, and, and poaching. Some, some governors do that. That's not the approach. We want to work really, we, we want to work together really well as a region. But to the extent that you might be looking to expand, you might be looking for more space, this is absolutely the place you should look. We're also putting it <clears throat> to, to the folks in Delaware. We're really making it in your financial incentive to help recruit. Because last year we signed something that we call our business finder's fee, or our BFF. And the way this works <laughs> is, if, is if a Delaware company, if a Delaware company persuades a company that's not already here to come here to create jobs, uh, then each company, the Delaware company and the new company coming in, We'll each get a $500 per person tax credit for every new job that's created by the new company, and they get it for three years. So this, is, so we, we listen really well. Uh, we know that we're only as good as the input that we get. That's why we go out every single week, talk to businesses, and when we go into businesses, we ask one single question, one simple question, which is what can we do to facilitate your success? Because the only important job these days for any governor is to facilitate the success of the employers in their states. Could be small employers, mid-sized, big employers, doesn't matter. We love every job. And that's one of the reasons we are so thrilled to have Secretary Locke here in, con in conjunction with this export initiative. We have a great port in Wilmington. In fact, one of the other things that the folks at Fisker Automotive said, was one of the reasons that they loved uh, coming to Delaware, they loved the quality of the workforce, they loved our responsiveness, and they also loved the port of Wilmington. And so we understand what exports are all about. We understand how tied in we are uh, to the export world. And our exports last year for Delaware companies increased very significantly. And we're proud of that. But we want to keep it going. And we know how great it is for your businesses when you can find new markets. And I think having the technical assistance of the Department of Commerce, having the cooperation with the Export-Import Bank, uh, having the relationship that we have with the Small Business Administration, it's, this, is all, this is all totally interconnected. And so we, I, did, I really just wanted to come and say thanks to all the folks from, sometimes people from Washington say I'm here to help and everybody runs away. In, in, in this case, when we have uh, the Secretary of Commerce, Secretary Locke, and the SBA, and the ex-IMBAC, and our uh, terrific Senator Coombs, all coming to say there really are things that they are interested in, do, in doing to help us, uh, we're listening very carefully. And together, our interests are so aligned. I can, I can, tell you for sure, without any doubt, that, that Secretary Locke would like nothing better than to see exports from Delaware companies, you know, boom, over the next few years. That's why he's here. That's why the rest of us here, and I hope this is a, uh, I hope this is a great day for all of you to learn. Thank you all so much.